Last year, I won my first Supercross. Since then, that's all I've been thinking about. Working hard, putting in the laps, and this Saturday starts a new journey. Well, you know, stepping away for two years was was the biggest thing, the big, the biggest eye opener. Getting a real job, you know, you're you're sitting there. I was building houses. People get have other jobs, but I was building houses. And and when you're sitting there and and uh, it's not what you want to do, and you know deep down you you love dirt bikes, but you didn't put your whole heart into it. Um, I look back on the time that when I was racing, uh, I hated training. Um, the track days weren't fun. Uh, I cared about, you know, the people. I just cared about uh, how I looked or, or the friends I was around. You know, I didn't really care about what was important, and that was doing my job. But you're young at the time, and you don't realize it. So, you know, everybody goes through that stage. Um, I don't regret it for sure. I mean, I do wish I'd, I worked a little bit harder, but um, at the same time, that's where, you know, it put me where I am today. And, um, I'm thankful for that, but yeah, so that's why my dedication and, and hard work comes in now is, is when you realize it and from that day on, it just, everything changes. So, um, you know, I take every day and I'm thankful for every day and I'm like, I'm just positive and, and sometimes I'm, when I'm training, I'm like, oh, this sucks, you know, but then I'll catch myself and be like, you know what? No, this is better than working a nine to five. I wish I was doing this a couple of years ago. The work ethic is there. There's no doubt about that. From from my side of it, I, I don't think he has a problem. You know, if we tell him Jim or you know it's this cycle today or this, it's it's done. You know, if anything, I had to pull him back a little bit because I think he's um, he wants to keep working. And there's certain days that we got to be like, Dude, it's okay to like, it's okay. So last year, I'm like, holy crap, you know, like he's on a whole new level. But then this year, I'm like, oh my gosh, like compared to last year, like he's totally up to his program. He's got a better diet, like all these little pieces are like so much better this year and I think it'll definitely be a good year for him. Training, I mean, mountain biking, road biking, I love that. It's always been fun, but uh, the gym thing is what I struggle with and now that I've, uh, you know, I started working with Will Hahn and, and my team manager, Mike LaRocco, we, we kind of uh, switched some stuff up in the gym and, and we made it fun. You know, we challenged ourselves and, and you know, me and Will will go in there and, and when we do a high circuit or a, a circuit workout, you know, I'm trying to beat him, he's trying to beat me. And, and at the end of the time, we're, you know, we're fist bumping and, and having fun, but it's still a challenge and we're racers. So, you know, it's just what happens, but just makes gym days fun. Gym days are never fun for anybody. When you're a racer, you just want to go on your bicycle or your dirt bike and ride. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've that's what I've said. I've switched stuff up and, and it's made me happier and, and 
you know, more motivated to go to the gym and, and be stronger. So uh, once I broke my leg in the summer, um, I kind of had a bunch of time to just, uh, you know, couch time. It's a, it was unfortunate, but um, at the same time, I got to think about a lot of stuff and think about uh, my results in Supercross and what I was missing and what I needed. And uh, there, there were missing pieces and, and uh, you know, you can't be perfect no matter what. You can try to, to be as perfect as you want, but it just won't happen. So uh, we're just trying, I'm trying to get better. and. And uh, so I ended up um, hiring David Villeman. We talked, and and you know he just caught my eye right away with what he what he said and what he brought to the table. So um, in the off season, I hired him, and and you know we started October first, and since then we've been grinding. And and uh, there's been bad days, there's been good days, but you know leading up to it now that we're so close. Uh, you look back at it now and, and all the rough days, you're, you're thankful for those. It's pretty cool to see because at the time, all you want to do is just like, you, you know, yell at someone or, or fire David or do something like that. But, um, you know, I think I'm just thankful that I did it at the time and just shut my mouth and listened. No doubt the best thing we could have done. For the last two years, Christian has kind of been like searching for something. And we didn't really know what that was, and we found DB, and we're like, all right, let's just try try him out. Like maybe that's what you need is a more like structure at the track. And so we hired him, and it's like, all right, this is what this was the missing piece, and this is what you needed, and it's been really good so far. So I'm excited to show everybody what they've been working on this season. I have a different approach from a lot of people in this industry, and then. Um, so that's what I told them, you know. I like quality work and then technique, speed, you know. And I like technique maybe uh, the most, you know, because I, I really believe when, if you ride technically the right way, um, like in your turns, standing up, whoops, shifting in the right gear, all those little things, when you put them all together, speed goes, you know, automatically you faster, you know? So first is, you know, to write technically well. Yeah, he has a lot of abilities, you know, on the dirt bike, he, he can ride well. Um, I don't like to use the, the word talent because I don't really believe in talent. I believe in um, more like abilities and, and riding a lot to learn the sport and everything. And um, but. So I started, when I started talking to, to, to them about working with them, um, I went on YouTube and I watched a few videos and stuff. Um, I saw the race he won last year in Phoenix. And I texted him, I said, dude, you rode so bad. So that was maybe, you know, that was a, a very bad race. Like technically, you won, yes, but technically it was horrible. You know, I think the corners were not good, you know sit bouncing everything, you know, um, <clears throat> technically it wasn't good.
I think a lot of people thought him being smooth and pretty and nice and being talented and all this was a strong point. But it, it, it is a weakness for me. You know, too much writing like Wyndham, let's say, you know, like nonchalant and then sitting down. And, you know, we've seen Wyndham for 20 years, right? Like that. He was beautiful, you know? Um, but they don't really win championship, you know, when guys like, you know, obviously I'll see and read and, you know, blah, blah, whatever. <clears throat> so I think um, Christian's um, style is was in a sense a flaw you know you had to change him you know but and then you have to be efficient efficient where every part of the track you need to be on it to be fast and it takes time to work on it you gotta you know cut the track and then work on section and it's the same thing you have to make him realize what he's doing is working and what he did before was maybe nice, but it didn't really work. You know, it wasn't efficient. Um, so when you get there and then you work on the speed and the raw speed, then you're going to have to ride for a long time. So that's where the Phoenix come, you know. So, but my vision of, of you know, supercross, motocross is always to the quality of technique, which you know, become speed automatically when you put intensity and then when you put everything together. Um, and to do that with Christian, we had to make him look more aggressive and not as pretty anymore. Maybe it might not be as pretty now, but it's more efficient. So in the off season, we do a scrimmage with the team and it's just to kind of see where everybody's at. And, uh, you know, I was, I was meant to do West Coast and we do this scrimmage and I was thinking I was in a pretty good place. And we go do this, this to our practice day. We have all of our, our guys there, RJ, you know, Jimmy and Jeremy. So, um, you know, I felt good and we had a full race day schedule. I, I was fastest in practice in our time practice, what you would say. And then in the heat race, had some problems. And then in the main, I just, I shut down. Um, that was one of the first times I, I kind of broke down uh, I don't really like to talk about it. It was just a rough time, but um, you know, I think that that's why I'm doing East Coast now. But it was supposed to happen. I think I needed I needed that to happen to make me better, because then the following weeks you kind of know what to work on, and and that could have happened at round one at Anaheim, but it didn't. So I'm happy it happened in practice day, and uh, I can overcome it now on race day, and. And, you know, Villaman helped me on that day and, and made me stronger. So um, just keep my head up and, and uh, you know, prepare myself for Minneapolis Supercross and, and uh, win the championship. Being mentally strong was one of his, war like, biggest weaknesses. Even, like, last year he was working on it, you know, and it was getting better last year. And I think that's a big thing that maybe the fans don't know is that, that is hands down the rider's biggest weakness is the mental strength. Um, you can be like the fastest guy, the best guy in the gym, but if like you don't believe that you can win or podium, then you're not going to. Um, so this year, even compared to last year, he 100%, there's no other option than to win for him. Where last year he was going into it like, all right, we'll start with some top fives, you know, maybe we can podium. And I don't even know if, he honestly believed that he could win last year until he had had a couple podiums and he's like, all right, well, if I can freaking podium, then I can win. And then he won, obviously. And yeah, this year it's just, there's no other option. It's super cool to watch. The missing link for Christian has never been a skill or ability. He's had every tool in that department that he could possibly have over anybody. And I think he's known that. I think everybody in the industry has known that. Christian Craig is by far the most skilled person on a motorcycle. I think the missing link his entire career has been his mental strength and the will and the ability to know that he can do it and to know that he belongs there. And with, I think, his races last year, he still was missing it a touch, and he got his win. 
he knew, okay, I can do this, I can be here. And, you know, he had to overcome more adversity once again at Glen Helen. And now that I think he's coming back again, I think it's, he knows that he belongs there. He knows that he can do it. He's just everything, and, and if everything comes together, it's going to be really dangerous. Coming in last year, he was, uh, he had kind of a self-doubt maybe, um, not knowing where he belonged. He had a feeling that he could get a win, uh, could catch a podium here or there, you know. Um, but he just didn't have that belief system. So, you know, you have guys in the shop and me and his father-in-law and team managers and everybody's telling them, you can do it, you know, it's, it's there. But um, at the end of the day, you have to believe in yourself. So as these top level riders um, basically have to go out and prove it. And Phoenix last year was his turnaround you know, he finally said, I can win. So um, it wasn't easy. You know, Cooper kept him honest, and then he went down. And um, even at the end, you know, he's still he's kind of looking back and thinking, like, do I really have this? And, and then he wins it. And he's like, dude, I can win more. Like, I know I can win more. So uh, you know, like, coming into this year, he's got that mentality. He knew the the work that he needed to do, the stuff that helped last year, he needed to do, uh, do even more. So he changed up his, his gym program a little bit and um, he hired DV as a coach. He wanted to basically fine tune himself. And uh, so he invested it into himself. And coming in, uh, he's expected to win. He's expected to be on the podium week in and week out. So he knows that and he can believe it. And um, I think it just clicked. It finally clicked and, uh, you know, you can't change anything um, that happens on and off the track. You just can do your best going in. So believing is the, the first step. Um, I think at this point, you don't need to really work on anything as far as the dirt bike side of things or anything like that. And because he's such a technically sound rider, I think that he's got his, he's got his crap together on the bike. I mean, anybody that can watch him is like, if I could mimic to ride like him, I'd love to. But unfortunately, I'm way smaller and have no style. <laughs> um, no, I, I, you look at that, and there's so many aspects that he does so correct. And I think that you know he was one to admit it, that mentally was a little bit uh, of his weakness, because um, everyone knows that he's more incapable of riding a dirt bike. Christian is hands down the best dad for Jagger. They both have a crazy high amount of ADHD. And so with them both being extremely hyper, Christian is like, him and Jagger are like always on the go. They're always doing things together. They're always riding their bikes and doing this and that. And Jagger knows 100% that his dad loves him more than anything in the world. And everything that Christian does in his personal life and his career is for Jagger. I'd love to say it's for me, but it's probably not. And so it's Jagger has just brought like a whole different side of Christian out, I think, in his career too. And he can have a really bad day at the track, like everybody has bad days at work, and he'll come home and he'll see Jagger, and then it's like, all right, this day isn't that bad. You know, I'm healthy, I got my kid, you know, we'll have a good day tomorrow. So He's just kind of brought a lot of positivity into our lives, and I think as the years go on, it'll continue just to get better. My mindset now that, that I'm a dad is it's tough to, to be, a, you know, a tough guy on the track. You know, you want to be that guy that's a, that's a badass, you know, and, and then you got to come home and be a softie for your kids. So um, I try to play both roles, but uh, at the end of the day, I'm just a nice guy. and. 
and my mindset I'm just my mindset is just to uh, to be positive around everybody um, or you know just say positive things and I think that reflects on how you act so um, you know it is tough I, I have bad days at the track like I said and then you come home and your kids sitting there waiting for you to play with them and and uh, I like it though because it, it makes you forget about those bad days and you can just be like, you know what, this is why I'm here and and uh, let's go play and have some fun. So, you know, then you're ready for the next day. But um, definitely a different mindset on on the track and off with the kids. So uh, I enjoy it though. It's a challenge and, and I'm having fun. My dad never pushed it on me, so I'm not going to push it on Jagger. My thing is just, I think I'm going to have a dirt bike for him at all times, just like my dad. Um, it was always fun to go to the tracks, and, and when I was growing up, I just watched my dad. That's what I liked. I didn't really like riding dirt bikes, and, and so I think that's how he's going to be. Um, but if he loves riding dirt bikes, I'm fine with that also. The injuries, you know, you're going to be, injuries are part of every sport. Unfortunately, ours is one of the one of, one of the most dangerous. So, um, but you can't, you know, if if you love riding dirt bikes as much as I do, the smile it puts on your face is like no other. You know, you, if even if you go catch a baseball, it's it's the adrenaline. You know, riding a dirt bike is so much better. So if he enjoys it, you know, I'm gonna let him do it. So, um, but if not, I'm I'm fine with him swinging a golf club and, and paying for my retirement also. <laughs> When I was probably, I want to say maybe 12, my, my dad actually brought us home, me home, a KX100. And at that time there was the, I don't know if you guys remember, like the track in El Cajon right next to the airport. So he brought us like, oh yeah, I'm so pumped. I'm going to go ride. That time Christian wasn't even really riding. He was more into BMX. And then, so I went and rode one day. And the next day, it was no longer my bike. He took it away from me, said I suck, gave it to Christian. And ever since then, I was like, okay, yeah, I guess it's just not for me. I'm not the racer, but I always wanted to still be in it. And so I just learned how to work on him. I said, well, at least I can still be involved and be around the family still and everything. And so, yeah, that's how it all came about. I've been working with Christian on and off for four seasons. Um, this happens to be the second full-time season going into the East Coast Series. Um, me and Christian, we got a really good relationship. Um, you know, we, we've both been striving really hard, especially this off-season, knowing what our gains were from last year and what we needed to work on. So, uh, been really good just trying to come back from a leg injury and, and stuff. So, it's been it's been a lot of progress and, you know, day to day for a long time. So, um, just been working, making progress because uh, that's what it's about. We're trying to get to the B on the top spot, you know, not just one time, but multiple times this year and hopefully at the end of the year be on the top spot there. So, um, the relationship grown, it's been really good and I'm excited. Yeah, being now where the position I am, you know, engine builder crew chief for Star Racing and Christian being on Geico, it's super tough, you know, being at the races. <laughs> like I said, coming into Minneapolis, it's going to be very hard again. But deep down inside, like obviously, you know, blood is thicker than anything. and. I would love to see Christian to win, and I want him to win, and I believe him that he can win the championship, and I think he believes it, and I think he belongs on top of the box every race. Uh, I mean, I don't see any reason why he can't win, but to win the title, you need to be on the podium every weekend, so I don't see any reason why we'd be upset with the second or a third at mini or anything like that. I, I think that that's still great to build on. and. 
Uh, you look back at most of those titles, it was the guys that stayed in that top three consistently. So um, you get to take the good with the bad. You got to minimize your bad nights with third. And um, when the victory presents itself, you got to go for it. What will make me happy? If I could look a year from now and know that Christian's healthy, I will be happy. But I say that and I know that he can freaking win and dominate. So if he's healthy, awesome, that's the biggest thing. And then if he's winning and doing good and happy, then that's awesome too. Because I know he can, he can take everything right now. I think once you, once you do win, everybody's mindset changes when that happens. Um, it, it makes you more confident, makes you uh, want to do it more. It's addicting. You know, that's all I want to do is win. It's the best feeling. So um, going into this offseason, I knew I had a couple things I needed to work on, and, and especially mentally, that's what I'm missing, I think, the biggest. And that's what I've been working on the most is, is just being confident in myself. You know, I, I, looking back at the races, I beat myself in the head. You know, I, I broke down. It wasn't physically, it wasn't the bike, it was me. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm glad I, I realized that and, and worked on it and um, hired a mental coach. And, you know, it's, that's what I'm trying to do now is just be confident in myself and, and know that I am one of the best on the track and, and I should win. So, and I have done it now that, you know, that's all you expect from yourself. So. Um, when it doesn't happen, it sucks, but you just got to keep trucking and, and there's a eight race series or nine race. So um, I want to be at, in Las Vegas with a red plate and hopefully win that title. To tell you the truth, when there's, there's a lot of good guys on the East Coast. If he rides like I've seen him ride and he rides his potential, he doesn't think about anything else than his riding and then being like if he doesn't think about anything other than the quality of his riding, and he should dominate. Seriously, I don't think there's no, there's no question about it. And there's riders, pro riders, that I see they check my stuff. Oh, like during? Yeah, Cooper. Like, like the Marvin or Cooper or this. They check my story on Instagram. What, what do they care what I do? Seriously. People are like, no, oh, he's just a boy. Like, he doesn't have ADHD. I'm like, no, you just wait. And I go to the doctor when he's 13 years old, and the doctor says, okay, yeah, maybe he does. <laughs> and Thank mm -hmm. you.